live hey what's going on world it's me again ethan smith aka big sarge large and in charge of my one and only self taking myself up off the shelf to find my greatest internal wealth to better myself hopefully you're doing the same for yourself you know what it is speak grunt grunt speak where we speak to you and you come through and you speak to us too that's what we do 11b 11 charlie for our uh, officer brothers, 11 Alpha, and the 0311 Marine crew. You know how to do this for you, this for your families too, and the people that love you. Shout out, salute to my brothers and sisters in arms that wear that cock and balls too, that cab. But, uh, you know, we gonna make it do what it do. And hopefully we say something on here that's gonna bless you. I'm pretty sure to release some stress for you and help you get through. But I got my crew with me, Whiskey Charlie and Killer Wolf. What's going Whoa. on, fellas? Shit, man, doing what we do, baby. On um, Killer Wolf Fitness, doing what it do, motherfucking on um, everything right, baby. That's what I'm doing, man. That's what's up. Getting it tight. tight. Looking for me another book to read, man. Oh uh, man, I have to send you one. But yeah, everything copacetic. Damn, got... already on your second book. I need to start my first. I, 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 I breaking up you breaking up horrible bro it's coming together it's coming together hold up is that better any better mm -hmm. there we go that I, I had to turn off the porn it was on the other side it's in the open screen part on here we already knew it. <laughs> Looking at boots. Uh, not, uh, but uh, uh, so. <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah. Man, yeah. There you go. You back. Yeah, I'm bouncing around right now, but uh, no, I guess uh, off of what you said, man. Uh, you know, I've not been a whole lot just uh, working in the yard, work at the house, uh, me and my wife, and kids and stuff like that so you know just staying busy yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with that nothing wrong with that um yeah today has been a busy busy day man so i got to get my my energy back up because soon as i get off of this thing i'm going to take a shower and start relaxing for tomorrow because i've been going since ooh, about 2 30 this morning usually come around the weekends man my, my my days be broken up from friday through sunday my daughter at the house and um she got a job. She had to be at work at like three in the morning. So I make sure what the hell I get is she her doing? What the hell um, three o'clock in the morning. Man, she three she acts morning. she makes like eighteen, nineteen dollars an hour or something like that to bake bagels at Einstein. She's like a baker, bruh. So she go in. It's a great schedule for her, three AM to eleven AM, then you back at the house chilling. But until yeah. she get uh uh, the vehicle that she's looking to get another vehicle she just sold the vehicle that she used to have now she's looking to get another one so you know how dads do how pops do we make it do what they gotta do so i make sure i get her there and i get her picked up too but man it breaks up your sleep and all those other things but i ain't complaining i just know sarge ain't a spring chicken like he used to be so 2 30 in the morning it'd be tiring you know yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah 2 30. Hey, hey, what's burn. going on, Miss Siley? So, little mama. <laughs> yeah, this guy done taking a bath. They've been outside playing in the sand all day. Oh, you already know. That's the best way to be when you're a kid, running around, having a good time, having a blast. You know, it's been a minute since we did this, but uh, let's talk about this. Uh, which one of y'all got that one-minute win, one-minute war for me? That one-minute uh -oh. Oh, see, one minute win, one minute war. You oh, you weren't you was gone for a little while. So let me uh -oh. let me uh one minute win, one minute war, man. It's something that I started wow, a long time ago. My wife had to remind me. I started it on the expression session show. One minute win, one minute war is uh something that you may be warring with, something that may be bothering you, how simple it may be, and then the win for you, what you winning at, or how you gonna win the war that you win. So, you know, you take a minute to talk about something that you warring with. And then you take another minute or two to talk about the win, how you made it through or something that you went in at. I'll give you an example. My one minute war would be 
waking up at 2 30 and breaking my sleep you know what i'm saying it messes <laughs> up my sleep pattern it messes up my workout routine because by the time i get back home i just want to attempt to lay down and catch up a couple of more z's but it don't usually work for me so the win in that you know after battling through that the win in that is it gives me time to really be up early get into my read and get into my meditation time get into some other things that i yeah. need to do and then and, and it just helps me keep me focused too so okay, i'm hey, grateful that i have the opportunity to be able to get right, up and do what I can for my daughter and do what i need to do okay. for my family and at the 2 30 in the morning it don't break me it just makes me a little tired so it's a little struggle right now, you know, because I was working on the schedule that I had going well. But the win in that, man, I'm making sure my daughter get what she need to be safely. And as a parent, for me, I see her actually going into her place of work and how things go. So ain't nobody out at that time of night. So I make sure she all right and everything good. So that's the win for me, bro. So, you know, that's it. Little war, little win. Something that we all go through. All right. All right. Well. I guess so. Um, of course, my fucking war was divorce. Glad that shit over with. <laughs> and shit, I, I can say the win was I found myself, you know, spiritually, mm -hmm. um, mentally, um, became a better person from it. You know what I'm saying? And shit, man, just focusing on winning in life, period, you know, and continue on what I got to do. Be a good That's father. Right. You know, all that good stuff. <laughs> That's what's up right there, man. You got to let me know. Off guard, I had to thank it, you know, actually, you know, come yeah. back with something because I ain't never heard that one. Oh, yeah, man. We've been running that one for a while since uh, you was on a little hiatus. We right. start running the one-minute win, one-minute war. It's been doing pretty well. You know, usually people <laughs> drop down in the chat, talk about that, and, uh, you know, kind of go back and forth with it. So, Right. Like a little intro thing to include more of the audience so they can feel involved as well. Not us just barking out stuff to them and they can talk about what they're going through and we can talk about how we can help them too. Right. So that's about it. Uh, yeah, Whiskey Charlie. Yeah, hey. we on Whiskey Charlie. Yeah. Hey, uh, I would say, uh, I don't know, I think I've already said this before and I'm still, uh, I guess I'm just still uh, lacking on it, but uh, pers personal time. Uh, my war would be just uh, taking time to myself uh, and getting, uh, you know, focusing in on myself more than I am focused on everything else. Uh, I, I discussed, I guess, with uh, some uh, some people at work and some other people. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, I always feel like a, a failure if I don't do certain things like being productive of what I like doing. Right. Doing things in my yard, doing things in my house, doing things at work, staying busy at all times. But uh, it's a uh, draining, uh, draining it. Uh, uh, getting to me a lot because I'm not focused on, first of all, personally, myself, uh, my physical and my mental part of me because I'm so focused on trying to improve either myself and or the things in around me that I just don't just take the time to set to, to, to decide for myself and just relax. So I'm always beating myself up. So I haven't found that, uh, I guess I haven't found that uh, uh, road or path or whatever else that I need to take to just, you know, take take it easy. Uh, I feel like if I take it easy, then I'm letting something slip and letting something fail uh, in general. So I've got to find that point uh, to stop feeling that way whenever I don't do anything. That's what's up, man. You know, when I went to church today, they was talking about, and it's something I was talking to my wife about, about how important it is to take rest, man. We get so busy attempting to do everything, you sometimes feel like we don't do nothing. And one of the hardest things to do in life and one of the most important things to do in life is to do nothing, to sit down in silence, to think, to hear your own thoughts, to talk to yourself, to ask yourself questions. How do I want to grow? Where do I want to go? And if you're a praying man and you're a spiritual man, you'll never hear God's plan if you're always on the run because he ain't coming to you when you're busy. He's speaking that small, quiet voice and, you know, not to... Uh, this ain't this ain't no shade, but I remember when Killer Wolf came back on or a conversation we might have had when he came back on. He was talking about when he went through his accident and everything and laying up there in the hospital and hearing God talking to him. You know what I'm saying? It reminds me of what my father said to me before. You don't want God to have to lay you down on your back in order to get your attention. So sometimes you have to make you have to make time 
for something that's greater than you. You have to make time for you. Like you got that beautiful yard out there. You got a beautiful family and you setting that all up. You need to wake up four in the morning or 10 o'clock at night when you out there and just turn your phone off or turn all the TVs and all that shit off and just sit there in silence for 10, 15, 20 minutes until you start getting comfortable in it. And then the more you do that, the more you will understand, all right, this is where it's at. I don't want to wait till I'm laid down on my back for me to, you know, really uh, start to spend time for myself because I didn't been there too, brother. Yeah, I appreciate that, Big Sarge. Uh, yeah, I just got to find that time, you know, and, uh, you know, and actually accept the time. I mean, again, my mind at 100 miles an hour, I could be doing this. I could be doing that. Or, hey, I got the time to do this. I need to be doing this. You know, so uh, just slowing down and, of course, enjoying life because life's short. So uh, got to enjoy yeah. it while you have it. Enjoy you never know when you girl, it is. girls. <laughs> Absolutely. You'll enjoy them a lot more when you here's the thing, though, as they get older, you want to start setting things in place to where you slowing down a little bit now so you could be at peace and enjoy that time when you with them. So you have to enjoy that time for you, too. We already know you're a rock solid dad. You're not going to you're not going to ever stop being there for your family and doing what you need to do. You just may have to schedule the things that you want to do. You can get so much more accomplished when you have a schedule and a plan for where you're going and what you're doing, as opposed to kind of just running around like we do with a chicken with our head cut off. Like in the infantry, we always had a plan before we went on attack. We had a plan for the plan, and we moved slow and methodical. As they say, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. But once you got there and you on the mission, then you hitting it full steam ahead. And it's kind of the same thing in life. You know, you kind of slow down. You think through the process of what I need to do. And once you win that thing, you give it your all. Give it the best of you. So that's what's up, man. I know you got it. Give me that's two, a bit, uh, hey, but, uh, hey, big Sarge. Hey, but uh, that, that that was my war. My my win is, hey, man, I'm getting shit done. <laughs> it may yeah. be against my war. But uh, I'm getting shit done, and uh, I'm enjoying it, man. Hey, uh, <laughs> life is great, man. God is good. So, you know, I, I, I'm I, not going to – I'm not saying that's a complaint of what I said earlier, but uh, I definitely would say that, uh, you know, God has truly blessed me. Like y'all were talking about, hey, my daughters and everything else, and my wife, I, I can't, uh, can't complain because I, I could be in a lot worse situation. You know, I've always said – one of the things I always heard and always said though, and fed off of is – you know, you think your life is bad or you got certain situations going on, it's bad, but somebody's out there in a lot worse situation that you're than what you're in. So be appreciative of what you have and uh go from there on that, you guys. So don't don't always think, I mean, you, you may you may be without a job, but you could be a guy without a job and be homeless and also without a leg, right? Or the situation right. could even be worse, you know. It's all about a mindset in, inside you. It's a mindset inside you of what situation you're in. Right. Yep. And I didn't, yeah, I'm not taking that no negative way. I'm just, you know, focused or paying attention to what you're saying when we, you know, thinking about spending time with ourselves for the improvement and the betterment of ourselves. You look at Killer, and I'm not saying that this is not you. When you look at Killer and he's sitting in that garage when he get on, he always just look calm and relaxed and at peace. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, that peace is something that comes from within. And the more you find and not just you, me too. The more we find that peace within, the more our family wins. You know what I'm saying? The more we find peace within as men, the more our family wins. I, I employ you to, to pick up that book that me and Killer was talking about, The Way of the Superior Man, and find some time. Not fine, because you know, time ain't lost. It ain't, you ain't getting no more. It's 86,400 seconds in every day. Every morning you wake up, that's what you get in 24 hours. So make time just like you make time we make time to go to work we make time to work out we make time to eat we make time to drink we make time with our family you have to make time to strengthen your mind or you're just gonna keep running around doing things to improve all around you but you need to do stuff that's gonna really improve you too so i feel you brother i'm right there with you peace surpasses all understanding yeah with all that being said whiskey charlie you gave us a topic tonight, and uh, I think we need to get into that for we for we go too far. And it was kind of a combination of things, talking about the NFL drafting. If your team got 
you know, somebody you was looking for, if you even play, watch college sports to know who got drafted, were you excited about it? Do you even care? And then moving on from there, talking about the six bad habits you might have picked up while in the military or things that you picked up that can be considered a bad habit from the military. And I know one of the things that you kind of mentioned is uh, in the military, we have this attitude towards civilians as if they're not people like us. We do things a different way than civilians do. And then when we come out, we come out with a certain attitude where we're expecting them to be a certain way, to handle things with punctuality, what, you know, be clear and, and direct and decisive of what they want from you and what they need you to do. And that could be sometimes looked at as a bad habit because we could uh, come off as, as people who are not beneath you, but not on the same level as you. And in some cases that could be true just from a mindset point of view, from being on time, from the way you carry yourself, but they may not have had the same training we had. So just thinking about a few bad habits you might have left the military with and things that may have happened in the NFL draft. I'll be honest with you and say I don't have a clue what happened in the draft. I don't, yeah, I don't have a clue. Like I just pulled it up so I could talk about it to see who went number one and number two. Hey, but I don't have a clue hey look, D hey, Detroit Lions did their thing though. Man, Detroit Lions did their thing. <laughs> Picking somebody and winning games is two different things. <laughs> You ain't never lying. I know on um, Pittsburgh, we got a quarterback, um, Kenny, Kenny Pickett. And he got my name, so maybe we're going to the Super Bowl, but Did anybody uh, – you uh, know Baker Mayfield get picked up by a team yet, or he's still with Cleveland? He ain't in no. Cleveland. He's still he in Cleveland. Nobody picked him up yet. He in Cleveland still? No, they got rid of. They want to, but nobody. He's still in they Cleveland. They haven't picked. released him. They were trying to get some picks off of him. Man, that's, that's cold. Funny, and, and, no, man. and nobody was willing to give up anything. Hey, but uh, hey, Killer Wolf, one of my uh, old uh, buddies from uh, school way back, as actually my uh, my old wrestling coach's son, actually uh, got invited to uh, to Pittsburgh's camp. Oh, to try out. There we go. That's what's Still up. a nation, yeah. buddy. Still a nation. That's Killer Wolf sitting over there looking like he can go out there and play linebacker for somebody right now. <laughs> hey, they, they need to come sign me. No I'll come that motherfucker with the Kevlar on in that bitch. <laughs> like, you know he a regular. I'll put the Kevlar on that motherfucker. Hey, you coming there with that Kevlar on, man. You're going to kill somebody you hit them with that thing. Well, my motherfucking sappy plates. Put my, put my vest on <laughs> with the sappy plates on. Now, I did see, I think, uh, when I looked at this NFL draft uh, results pick, I was excited to see that Detroit Lions pick number two, and they got Aiden Hutchinson out of Michigan, and that boy is a beast. He was definitely a beast on that DN, so it's all about if it translates over to the NFL. And you know how that go. A lot of times, man, guys be great in college, and they do what they do, but if you go to a wrong organization and you go to the wrong team, man, that could – that could really hinder you because the culture yeah. and the attitude of the team and individuals, you that become sometimes like, a company you keep. That's just like Stafford. Shit, he, he left Detroit Lions with his second year, was second year with the Rams and won oh. fucking Super Bowl. Yeah, baby. It's good. yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a good fucking quarterback, though. Absolutely. Yeah, great yeah. quarterback. I won't say great, but yeah, good quarterback, you know? And then you're in the right – Things play a part, man. Being in the right system, having the right group of guys around you. It's right. almost like being in the military. You know, you have a guy that have a, a team leader that don't know how to deal with him, don't know how to deal with him. You think he's a shitty soldier. And then you give him over to somebody else, another leader, and they get the best out of him because they know how to put him in the right position. They know how to really uh, coach them, to really lead them, to really guide them, to pull the best out of them that they have in them. That's my push-up alarm right there. But, yeah, man, we'll so, see this year. I'm, I'm not too excited, but, you know, I'm still with the Steelers, man. I, I ain't too excited yet, though. So did Ben, did ben officially retire or what? Yeah, he gone. Okay. He should have did that fucking four years ago. <laughs> when he said he didn't want to play football no more. You know, when you ain't got it here. 
You damn sure ain't got it here. So yeah. He yeah, I thought that was pretty strong. interesting. It was a shock to me since we talking football when uh Brady retired after the season. I wasn't expecting that at all. I was shocked. And I was even more shocked when he came back. You know, I thought about him like, well, maybe he retired because his wife wanted him to. And I know that was big for her. Like, you know, we need you here with the family. But when you watch, I watch my ESPN and catch like the Undisputed show with uh, old Skip and Shannon. And there was some pretty interesting stories out there about him and old uh, Sean Payton trying to hook up and get down to Miami, be coach quarterback and do their thing. And I don't know how true that was. Or what? Maybe that's why he retired and did it the way he, you know, he thought he could go out. But once they realized they couldn't make that happen, he had no choice but to come back. And Sean Payton still not coaching anywhere. So it's interesting to see all the politics and everything, even with the NFL draft. It's always a lot of politics in that. And people go back and forth. That's why guys like Baker won't won't get a job no time soon, because. <laughs> <laughs> The politics involved is not in his favor. Yeah. God know how to leave certain shit alone, man. Just how it is, bro. Just how it is. <laughs> if you try to get that work, you try to get that work, buddy. Well, it's, um, as my boy Eric Thomas often talks about, you know, sometimes we dream and then we acquire the dream and we stop dreaming. So if your dream is just to get to the NFL, once you make it to the NFL, a lot of cats stop working because they feel like they already made it. It's like when I'm talking to you and I'm like, man, I ain't started doing those burpees yet. You still be like, man, oh, I'm on them whole other Iron Man burpees now because my my vision might have been to knock out these burpees and now that my body got used to it instead of me just saying, all right, I'm good. I made it. Nah, I'm going to up the ante and I'm going to add more burpees to it. I'm going to do something different with my burpees. And that's why you have guys like Tom Brady that last the years that they have. And regardless of what you want to say, that's why you have guys like Ben. Like Big Ben was in the league almost 20 years. He could have he could have sat back and chilled after he got his ring like in his second year. You know what I'm saying? Because there ain't too many cats doing that. And then to, to tell you the truth, man, a lot of them guys will be happy with one. You know, if you went to the big stage once, if I played football for fucking 20 years, as long as I at least got that motherfucker once and won, you know what I'm saying? That's because that's your whole purpose is to win Super Bowls. It ain't about, oh, my team was good this year. Did y'all win the Super Bowl? You know what I'm saying? That, did you make it to the big stage? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All that work, so you time to start over next year. But, yeah. And, then, you know, you got you 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 say guys just want to win one and like uh whiskey charlie said the lions did good in the draft but it's like for years the lion has had the number one pick or the number two pick it doesn't matter what player you pick if you don't know how to put them in position and you have teams like the lions and you know what tampa bay used to be maybe before tom brady or like years past you got teams that's never even tasted the playoffs don't get out the first round of the playoffs so to even get to a position to do that, hey, staff hey big in. Sarge, hey, keep keep my Texans out of your mouth over there, okay? <laughs> I hear you over there, right? We made it out of the second round, okay? But uh, hey. outside of that, look, I look at it this way. De hey. Dead serious, though, and it, this is me being up front about it, I wouldn't give a shit about Super Bowl if, if I'm getting paid, bro. Pay hey. me. That's what, dude. I don't give a you shit what anybody say they're, they're in there for. I don't give a fuck if it's Super or not. That's the yeah. hey, that's the difference. No offense. That's the difference between the good players and the great players. Because the great players is not playing just for the check. They playing because they love the game. And to show that you are a, a true warrior and a great player, you want to win the chip, especially if you're a quarterback or you're a big time receiver. It's like, what did I do this for if I didn't win the chip? Me going to Iraq. I was in Iraq two months before I first seen my first firefight. And I remember talking to my driver who was on his second tour, like, yo, I ain't come over here just to ride around and get blown up. I came over here to get a CIB. I'm in the infantry, bro. So if I don't get no CIB, what the fuck was the point of coming? <laughs> like, right. So that was it. I needed to be tested. And I think for a lot of these guys that play football, the Super Bowl is the ultimate test. It shows that, yo. I'm the best of the best out of 32 teams. Like in this moment, I might not be it next year, but this year we came together at the right time. We did what we needed to do. 
And I ain't mad at you about that. I would enjoy the checks, but the competitor that I am, I'm here for the chip. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I seen Whiskey Charlie burning that Texas jersey back then as your. Hey. <laughs> hey, no, that happened. I, I ain't one of those fans. Look, I, I'm a true fan, man. I, I don't care. Hey, look, win or, win or lose, baby, I'm, I'm there to the end. I, he burning look, hats, take- wristbands. You ain't, hey, come on, Whiskey Charlie. You know you ain't wearing no Deshaun Watson jersey out there right now. Hey, <laughs> if I could afford a Deshaun Watson jersey, I would have been on one. But, I, hey, look, I got other priorities. I got to do yard work. I got things I got to build around the house. That's my that's my deal is, though, is I, I like to have a lot of that stuff. But it's all about the end of the day. It's about what you prioritize. I can go out and get nice shoes, get a brand new fucking car, no truck, you know. But I don't. I prioritize what, what's most important to me. And at the end of the day, not no fancy. Like the phone that I'm on right now, man, it's a $200 phone. Everybody else is like, oh, why don't you get this new phone? I don't need that new phone. I don't need that new car. I don't need that new – I don't definitely don't need that new fucking note. Hey, you ought to get this uh, – you ought to go get a credit card from this place. No, I don't need any more fucking debt, man. I'm happy where I'm at because I'm – me and my wife, I mean, we don't make uh, – we'll make the best decision, I guess, when it comes to spending money. But at the same time, we're kind of also smart when it comes to spending money. Nice. I literally have to tell my wife. I literally have to tell my wife every now and then that get you something like when we do have the money. I said get you something that you want. Doesn't matter how much it is. Get something you want. She's like, oh, that's too much, right? So having her there making those type of decisions, it's really at the end of the day is just making the the quality and the right decision. Everybody looks at all the stuff at uh you know posting my page like, oh man, you got a lot of money. No. And I penny pinch, but what I do is uh, whatever I can save a dollar on, that's what I start stocking up on and saving it off to the side. Later on, when I get the rest of the money and I can afford the project, that's what I go ahead and start putting it towards. But now I got people over here. Uh, I got family and friends that are saying they want to have parties at my house because how nice it is. There you go. That's what's up. You have a very lovely house, man. I looked at some of your uh, what's going on, McGinnis. Thanks for tuning in, brother. I looked at your pictures like. When you, that you posted back when you first got your house and what it looked like, you know what I'm saying? And what it looks like now. You've done a lot of amazing work at your home from the front and back. And you should be proud of that, you know? And that that is a great thing to be proud of because some people don't take pride in their home the way you do. And you, you are absolutely right. They're more, they're more concerned with having a fancy truck in the driveway, you know, some nice shoes on their feet, but their house is falling apart. You know, I'm from... I'm from Detroit. I'm from inner city America where you see people with the with the cars in the rims, but the motor about to fall out that thing. Every time the sounds hit, the car shut off. <laughs> like you got a sound system <laughs> the <car> running. <laughs> no. Like, hold on, man. No. You got your priorities all wrong. So I feel you. That's dope. Right. Got yeah, you. and I, I said, I, I, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Cause look, hey. I don't spend a whole lot of money, of course, because my wife doesn't let me. Uh, but uh, it's also about li- live within your means, man. You- you've got to stay in your lane. So I know I could do better. I know I got a lot more opportunities to have a lot more nicer things, but I'd rather prioritize other things. Like uh, whenever I got my bonus from work, I got quite a bit back from work, but uh, we prioritized my girl's teeth. Yeah, it was expensive. A dental appointment for both of them and getting dental work was a lot of money. But at the same time, I prioritize that over because we're planning on remodeling the kitchen. That that with their dental appointment, it knocked that out of play. But guess right. what? It's about priorities and it's about doing what's best for the situation at the time. So the situation at the time was having my girl's teeth and their and their pain go away. So I can care less about a kitchen. I can cook on anything. Fucking give me a fucking goddamn fire pit with some uh, grill on it. I'll, I'll make something happen. I can't and, say this. I can't say this. I've been holding back from a couple of things that I got going because, you know, sometimes people pray on your downfall. But I'm proud to say, man, come mid-July, you know, I should be at my new pad. You know, there you go. And I'm on here telling it, but, you know, I I learned to try to start keeping more shit to myself. You know what I'm saying? And like, cause people will prey on your downfalls, shit like that. But man, come, come mid to live, man. I'm gonna be down there hollering at y'all. Hey, yeah, Katie, man, come holler at me. Hey, let let them pray on your downfall. Hey, can you look? Can anybody on your up there. Them? But yeah, it, it was um. Hey, guess what though, too. Huh? Hey, guess what too? 
people that prey on your downfall uh, or that uh, feed off your downfalls are also people that are jealous of you and jealous right. of what you've got coming to you. So right. you look, look at it that way, bro. Don't hey, that they they're just jealous of where you're at. That's what they see. They notice where you're going. So in, mentally, they're they're jealous of where you're at and where you're going. They thought it was going to slow you down. You know, situation is going to slow you down. But guess what? It's only made you better. It's only made you a better person and made you get even stronger. Because guess what? Mentally, you're like, fuck this shit. I'm doing this even better. I already learned my lesson. Fuck this shit. I'm going this at a different route, and I'm going to be even better. So that that's what blessing, you're doing, baby. Bro. Keep it doing, killer boy. I gotta, man. Look, I swear, I got, I gotta be half Louisiana and Texas, man. I was in, been in Texas what about fucking fifteen years, so I live half my life here and half in Texas. So, man, it feel good, man, to get back home. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. It was what home was for you. And I remember, <laughs> she when I met you coming out that boot in in, in Atlanta, what was you 17, 18? And yeah, right, about, yeah, yeah, right. right about what, just May 18. Yeah, yeah. from right well, there, you was old, old at Fort Hood for all those years, you know. So yeah, but That's, yeah, uh, man. It's, it's a blessing. I'm absolutely. Um, we're gonna do it big, man. Um, probably let everybody come. Probably you know do a show. You know, it's a new pad, man. Just just sit back, relax, whatever your poison is, even though I don't drink no more. Hey, Whiskey Charlie, I don't know if you drank some banana vodka. Wow, you know, you drank all kinds of shit. I, I purchased a little liquor, whatever you need, man. Just come have a good time. You know me, man. I'm on that vine. That's that vegan one. Hey. This ain't nothing but cider and black cherry juice, bro. <laughs> I have yep. another hey, I, by the water. Hey, I got some of your vegan one. Hey, look, I got some of your vegan wine. Let me rub it out real quick. Right. Hey, I got another. <laughs> I kind of got another thing, too, man. I got a, um, you know, thank probably a special, special person that a job should be meeting soon, too, you know. Okay. So, yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> hey, so you were talking earlier about a, what's the name? Another book. Here's one of my old ones that I read. That's the dope one too. That Steve Harvey book, Jump. Is this oh. the right one? Yeah. Let me let me pull it back some so you can see it. That Steve Harvey book, Jump, is another book, man. That's a dope book. And where you at right now? What doing your businesses and launching your your Killer Wolf Fitness and your proteins and things like that. This would be definitely a good book to read because it's talking about exactly what you're doing. A lot of times in life. People don't move to that next step in their life because they're afraid to jump. You know, they waiting to make sure the parachute is packed right and all those things. Everything got to be all ducks in a row. And in some cases, you do need all your ducks in a row. But some cases we we have people who stand on the edge forever, ever, ever and never take a step. You know what I'm saying? Regardless right. to whenever you jump, however you jump, you're going to get bruised up. You're going to get scraped up. But that's like anything else. That's going to heal and you're going to be good to go. So if you want another good read, that's you know not too too thick like a novel. That's a good book that's been out there for a while. And then you can tell me offline, just depending on where you at or or what type of books you looking to read. Then I definitely can feed you and send you a list because most of the books that I read is definitely gonna be something inspirational, something more thought provoking, something that's gonna be challenging me to help me grow. You know. Then I got a ton of other books as well. So. That's another good book that might be a good read for you, or just whatever you like, man. Whatever you feel. Shit. Shit. On your Send workout, me list, man. I'll, I'll go to Barnes and Noble tomorrow. I'll pick the motherfuckers up. Yeah, go to Barnes and Nobles. I go to Half Price Books. I be on Amazon. I be on all of the books, man. Yeah. Hey, hey, you guys. I'm just kicking it back here in the uh, hammock right now, bro. I got on the back porch, <laughs> laying back, staring at the. The lights show. Go ahead. We'll show y'all what I got going on here, bro. Look at that. That's yeah. what's up. You look like you need a straw in that Mike's Heart Lemonade. <laughs> With a straw hat on. Some shit. Wait, hold up a second. You said what on? With a squirrel hat on. <laughs> a squirrel. I thought you said a squirrel hat. I was like, what the fuck is a goddamn <laughs> squirrel hat? Yeah, it's that loose animal, man. Dragon, man. Scroll, scroll. There you go. <laughs> well, yeah, man, shit. 
Hey, so Kelly, what about some of those bad habits you think you might have left the go. military with? Whiskey Charlie, what was you uh what was your thought process when you when you came across that? I know earlier I was using the example the way we look at civilians when we're in the military and how when we come out. I know me, I can't speak for nobody else. You know, even being National Guard, 99% of my career, I know when you just come off a of drill status or just period being around and working with civilians or working with people who had never served, I, I had a totally different attitude towards them, you know? Um, sometimes it was a little bit disrespectful. Sometimes it was a little bit not understanding. So what were some of those things you think you brought from the military? And I know we brought a lot of good things that we talked about. What's some of the negative things that you feel like you brought? Uh, I would say with, with me, negative, see, I, I, I'm a manager. Uh, you know, retail, of course, but uh, it's holding back my uh, uh, my inner drill sergeant, I guess you would say, from going the fuck off on somebody <laughs> uh, and telling them how I really feel about what the fuck they are and uh, trying to hold myself back from uh, putting somebody on the floor. There you go. Yeah. What about you, Killer Wolf? Can you think of anything you might have left from the military with that could be considered negative? Um, I could be an asshole, but you know, I, I recruited <laughs> foul language, that. foul language. I, re I recruited that into, I have to say, you know, my time in the service, you know, all of us are assholes, like most of the platoon, the whole company be assholes. We know how to be assholes to each other, but when yeah. you're back home and you know, you kind of dealing with, say, your wife or you know, just regular people, they be like, damn, man, you know, you can be an asshole. I'm like, yeah. And I'd be proud of it, but I still, I still wear it to this day. Like, you know, I can't be an asshole. I've been working on it, so you know, that's that's damn sure one thing that I took from the military that could be bad. But yeah, and of course, I always want to slap a motherfucker. You know, <laughs> man. Um, road rage got it bad. I'm all oh, like, dude, put, put put the pedal to the metal, bitch. Um, <laughs> yeah. Road rage is terrible. I'll be yelling like all kinds of shit in the car. Hey, my road rage is what I think. That was one of the things that, uh, that was one of the, the questions I had to answer when I went to go be a police officer for APD back in 2008. And I was doing well when I seen the psyche, doing my psyche valve. I was doing great. Then that dude asked me a question like, how you feel about sitting in traffic? I just fucking no. lost it, bro. <laughs> like, man. sitting in traffic. What? Like, what do you no, mean? Like, what kind of question is that? Man, up. yeah. <laughs> rip it up. Yeah. He was like, nah, bro. I don't think you, I don't think you ready yet. You need some uh you need some more time away. I like, oh well, I guess I'm finna go do another tour. <laughs> like, <laughs> that hey, would what, be good. Hey, how, how do you uh like one of the things that also came across in that little thing I was reading on that's why I kind of brought up the topic is of course uh uh is gonna be talking on uh let's see here on uh following orders it's saying the issue of following orders is enlisted soldiers are trained to obey without questioning so getting to the civilian life you're not questioning you just do what the fuck you're told and I feel like I do that a lot like I don't I don't ever hold myself back like they say hey go fucking jump in a fire I'm jumping a fire because that's what the fuck I'm told you see me? That's because we, we're hard nosed. We're, we're trained to, you know, once we get a mission, we, you know, we'll fucking die to complete that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know, we worthless if we don't complete. To me, I'm the complete opposite. I ain't oh, following yeah. no orders. Like, no. When I got out of the military, that's that 1%, of baby. Yeah. When I got out of the military, bro, I'm like, I ain't, I'm not doing none of that. I'm not following no orders. You ask my wife, hey, listen, the rules, mm -mm, they, don't, they don't work for me. The, the rules is whatever I set in that moment. I followed rules for 15 years. I followed them well and I did what I needed to do. But once I got out in the civilian sector, I'm like, nah, especially if I see it's a better way to do that. Because in the military, a lot of times, you're just, why are we doing this? This is stupid. This don't make sense. It's a better way. But being that soldier and need to accomplish the mission, because you probably couldn't see the full picture at the end, you do as you told. But once I got out of the military, nah, bro, I'm not doing that. Rules, I, can't say I don't know what you're talking about. 
I, I ain't talking that at too, all. Man. I can say this to um, the little slang we have in the military. Um, like I was just talking to my girl today, and I was like, "Hey, what you eat for child?" She was like, "Fuck a child! I don't eat slop. What the fuck is child?" Oh, you know what I'm saying? Or you, like, or you tell your girl, "Hey, let me get some TP in the bathroom down here." You're like, you're like, what the fuck he talking about TP? Now, if you've been in a relationship long enough with that person, they know. You know, right. maybe they'll start saying it too. Like, hey, what we eat for child, little lady? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, hey, and, like and, throw me some TP downstairs. And that, that's one of the topics they kind of touched up on that damn thing I read on too, though, is uh, that uh, things that you, I guess, uh, unexpectedly uh, is different, of course, in the military is, of course, child is like given to you, you know, it's cooked for you and this, that, and the other. And then clothing, you know, you got the military uniform that is given to you and everything else. And so a lot of people, you know, getting back into civilian, civilian life is like, shit, I don't want to have to pay for this. So this is not just going to be given to me. Like, or hey, is this food not just going to be given to me? Like, bitch, you not know who I am? <laughs> right. Big Sergeant Rinka, what's going on, Sergeant Rinka? You say driving from back, driving back from Detroit. You wouldn't be coming from uh over there off Eight Mile at that Light Guard Armory or, or anything like that, would you? As one of my uh, old sergeants when I was over in Iraq, 0607, Big Sergeant Rinka. Yeah, you know, you mentioned that uh, child, and when you came back, it was definitely hard for me. Uh, it was a definitely an adjustment, like kill over there drinking that Powerade or Gatorade or whatever. And when you come, when you in Iraq, you're getting the Powerade, Gatorade, rip it, all Ripples. that for free. So Ripples. you gotta pay full price for that. Like, yeah. man, what's wrong with you? <laughs> man, you just go to a child. That's a reality man, check. Like what the fuck? Ripples. Man. Yeah. Hey, it makes you more appreciative from that point. Hey, it was yeah, given yeah. to me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like hell yeah. But yeah, I man, that's one thing to point it out. Rippets, man. I had the bitch you know, each pants pocket. I went through all flavors of the bitch. Let me get down. Let me get down. Put them in there. Let me get that. Let me get that. But yeah. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I like overseas child. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like at the child hall, they, they was cooking it up, especially my first tour at, at um Taji, Camp Cook. Oh man, yeah, you had, you had the women. They had hairstyles. I'm like, what the fuck? They had Popeyes. That motherfucker. But we wasn't like we was always at the farm right. doing mm -hmm. shit. But hey, that was the best one. Camp Cook, man. Taji, that motherfucker was nice. Yeah, I've been up. We've been up to Taji a few times, Whiskey Charlie. But we were dropping off detainees when we drove up there. Yeah. We went up there to eat. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I, yeah. you know, when so, we went in '09, the only anyway, thing we eating there is our. Hey, the only thing I was eating was that chili MRE on the way there. Well, you know, when we went in 09, you can go into Iraq in 2009. It was already like going up. Uh, yeah, that's the luxury. Plus, that's luxury. Yeah, I must say. That's what I tell people. Man, no be, be, we is on the BBC, so we down the left in the round of way. We had Popeyes, Burger King, Cinnabon. <laughs> like, we had it all. Man, <laughs> it, it, it sucks yeah. more to be at a good farm. When you can't enjoy the um the shit that's there, you know what I'm saying? You always fucking out. You got time just to come to child hall, get the fuck back on your track and go back out. But you know, we we took pride in that shit and we always complained about it, but at the same time, deep down, we knew that's where the fuck we needed to be at, you know. Yeah. But yeah. It's all okay, part that's of what's shit. up, Sergeant Rinka, driving back from the airport. That's cool. That's definitely better than being down there at the light guard. Man, you know, one of the things I think I brought back that might have been a bad habit, but well, wasn't a bad habit. It's probably a bad habit in my civilian sector. You talked about being an asshole and the way we talk to people. I was just talking to my wife earlier today. We was leaving out the house. I'm like, come on, man. She like, uh-uh, not today. I'm like, yeah, today and every day. Punctuality is key. Like, if you on time, you late. Like, <laughs> we need to go get to it. My family been looking at me like, you, hey, Sarge, we not in the Army right now. <laughs> like yeah, I get, oh, I get mad if you don't make the beds and shit, too. Oh, man. yeah. <laughs> oh, get look, that, hey, look, me, me, hey, me is sitting down eating chow and then getting them going, you know, type deal. Not not taking a break in between. Like, I sat down, they, they said, are you are you in prison? The way you eat, you act like you're in prison because you just chow fucking down. You don't even heat up. Like, people at work make fun of me because I eat fucking ravioli or shit right out of the fucking can. I don't even heat it up. They're like, what, what, why are you in such a hurry? I'm like, I got to eat this shit and get back at it, man. <laughs> we got to get, 
we hey, you got SP time, baby. We got make SP time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? And doing that though, now that you're working on a civilian side, are you doing things on the other side? If you work in the regular job or whatever, people appreciate that and they see that. I remember when I was running my truck, my business through Sears. And I would come in there and a the lady asked me, she like, Smith, you're not from here. Are you military? You do something different. I said, yeah, I'm not from here and I'm military. Why you say that? She like, you be in here at 545 every day. You always, you know, speaking up, voicing your opinion about what's not right or, you know, what's not going this way. And you be on point. You know everything that's happening and they respect you for that. I watch how they follow you. I'm like, yeah, it's just different. Coming from the military, as long as you know what's going on and you know the regs and the TMs and the FMs, and you know you abide by all that stuff, then you sweet when you squared away. And once you come in the civilian sector and you do that, because you know most people don't know, then it puts you leaps and bounds amongst your peers, the individuals that you're working with. And the, the people that you're working with might not like it. They might think, oh, look at him. He think he goody two shoes or he think he's this, that, and the third. But the people above you, they respect that. Because if you want to get to the next level in life, you got to be willing to give your all in life. I uh, heard somebody say, I, well, I've said it often. It's like the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So if you're going to half-ass it here, you're going to half-ass it somewhere else. And that's just the way it goes. <clears throat> yeah, I, 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 yeah, definitely. Hey, look, and that, you know what's crazy is uh, that's what's going on uh, with, the, with the world. Is I don't know what's going on, but, you know, just keep people employees. Uh, at, at work, man, that that's like fucking, you know, goddamn, it's the worst worst I've ever seen in this situation. I don't know, I don't know where people are getting money from these days, especially the youth. But it is, you know, coming around and work for like two weeks and they're gone. Like, don't even say nothing. They'll have no fucking respect, uh, uh, <laughs> in common, no common courtesy of, hey, I'm about to, hey, I'm leaving. I don't like this, or hey, this is not working out for me. Just straight up. And it, what's sad is it's not just even the youth, man. There's some goddamn grown ass fucking people out there that just up and dip out, and then we call them like, "Hey, you didn't show up to work today." Oh, I quit. Y'all, y'all this, that, and the other. Like, what the fuck? Like, you don't know, have no common courtesy. It's because the world right now. What it is is also is that nobody's uh, taking any. Uh, uh, what is that damn word I'm looking for? Where they're taking not resumes, but they're taking, re- no re- re- recognition. Uh, not rec- I want to say recognition. Uh, where, where they tell you uh, when you call another workplace, say hey, how they uh, how they work. Oh, that shit called? Oh, referrals. Referrals. Not, yeah. Not referrals. referrals recommendations. Like yeah, yeah. They, they, they a lot of places don't do that anymore because, of course, everybody has their own opinion on everybody. But at the same time, I like to be able to know if this motherfucker had like six jobs in the last. Uh, look, if I'm looking at a, uh, you know, the interview packet, and they had four jobs in the last past two years. I ain't hiring a motherfucker. Right. Yeah. But here's the thing also from a from a business point of view, being a person that was, you know, being an independent contractor and working for certain jobs, it's legally to us almost to a, to, to a point you cannot give a negative feedback on a, a past employee. You get your whole company sued and in trouble. So if you if I quit and then I call you and I ask you, hey, how was uh I was, I was, you know, Whiskey Charlie at the job. Oh, that dude sucks. He was always late, and I'm just berating you, and they find out you in trouble. Right. You can't do that. So you have to say, yes, he worked here. He was employed from this time to that time, and that's it. That's all you can give. But since you're an individual who looks deeper, and you look at the context of it like, yo, why did this dude have four jobs in the last two years? For you, that's a red flag. To somebody else, they like, oh, this dude could get a job. Cool. They just bring him on. They don't care because a lot of jobs are revolving doors anyhow. They just want a warm body in there anyway. Hey, well, that, that's kind of like just like, you know, the all also with the military. You know, the military, you know, uh, with ASVAB, you had to pass the ASVAB to get in. But not only that, then when, whenever you got in, you know, how they, they don't let you fail, right? And that's the same thing with a lot. I, I know with my job, they don't try to let you fail, but. Uh, I mean, you know, it is what it is, but military, they pay too much money to get you trained and to get you in to let you fail. If you fail, you fail it on purpose. That was intentionally, you physically put yourself in some danger or some shit like that to get out of the fucking military. It wasn't because, oh, uh, well, they, they didn't like me or I was just, 
I, I wasn't taking their shit. Now get the fuck out of here. You, your ass was just fucking retarded and you hurt yourself. Are and you it's, needs the, it's needs of the army, man. You know, I've I've encountered, you know, in all the years I've been in, that goes so many ways because it's definitely needs of the army. There's things that the army would accept at one stage, say 06 through 2010, 2011, at the height of the war, you could get waivers for, and you could get swept up under the rug. You get a DUI, you a E5, E6, you get a little slap on the wrist, you get an Article 15. You know, they let that slide. But then once there's, we're at peacetime, and you at 15, 16 years, and you close to retirement, I've met people and individuals who might have had like, now you got a failed PT test. And they're like, oh, we about to chapter you out because you got a failed PT test. Plus you had a DUI five years ago. Well, damn, that's fucked up. But since they don't need you no more, they just get rid of you. So those circumstances could be totally different too. But the ones that's just dirt bags, man, you know, in the military, it's a numbers game, especially if you're in the combat arms. We just need somebody to catch these bullets and send some bullets right. down range. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. Hey, Chris Adams said hey. Whiskey Charlie using that beard to hide his double chin. <laughs> <laughs> you got hey. that booty chin, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got, got I got two I got chin, huh? my balls are so big I have to cover them up two different places, bro. Okay. That's what it is. <laughs> I got another set of nuts underneath here. <laughs> True. But no, man, in all in all seriousness, no. But like we talking about bad habits from me, even the military, and we also mentioned a little bit about the NFL draft. And you have guys that take bad habits from college or high school into the NFL and don't understand that the NFL is a business. You have guys that take bad habits that they use in basic training because the drill sergeants will let you skate on some shit. Because we just need to get you through to your unit. And the good yeah. drill sergeant to tell you, it ain't like this when you get to your unit, bro. Active duty, especially when we got in, you know what I'm saying? Like late 90s, early 2000s. It's not like this when you get to your unit. The things that you're getting away with here, you're not going to get away with because you fall under a different set of rules. And some of these guys that make it to the NFL, they try to treat it like it's college. They try to treat it like it's not a job, like this ain't a business. You got some dude that's a billionaire paying you millions of dollars and you think you're just going to blow practices. You think you're going to show up when you want to show up and you're not even like a, 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 a top guy. You're not even like the right. starting guy. You think you can pull this? No, nah, that don't work. And it kind of goes the same hey. way in the military. If you're a rock star, you a PT stud, you a shooting expert, you ain't getting in no trouble, you're going to get a little bit more leeway than the dude that's not. That's just how the world works, period. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. Hey, Big Sarge, hey, the uh, one of the co-founders of Home Depot owns the Atlanta Falcons. Really? Damn. Yeah. Arthur Blank. Yeah, Arthur Blank owns the uh, Atlanta Falcons, yeah. and yeah, he, he's actually he's uh, founder of Home Depot. Yeah, he, he's he's one of the founders, one of the two founders of Home Depot. That's how he made his money, then, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, he you big know paid. It. He big paid. Yeah, <laughs> you just can't figure out how to get them uh, Atlanta Falcons to win the Super Bowl. As long as it ain't against the New England Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was, that was uh, well, shit, another he, level when, of disrespect. Them niggas lost that motherfucker. Man. <laughs> Chris Adams said, well, shouldn't those be eradicated while doing the prereq, i.e. college football, etc.? Um, You would think so. You would think they would be getting rid of the guys that don't understand the business and the opportunity of it, but those individuals will get rid of themselves. And mm -hmm. as an owner, it's like, ain't no need for me to get rid of them because you think about it, it's 32, 32 NFL teams. I think they say it's like 52 guy man, 52 guys on the roster. I think I've heard Shannon Sharp say it's like either 300 to 500 something jobs in the NFL. You got 500 guys playing football in, 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 in Texas coming out of college. You got 500 guys between UT, A&M, Baylor, Texas State going for those jobs. So we don't have to get rid of you. You'll wash yourself out. Like, it's an amazing system to be an NFL owner because you get to pick from the best of the best of the best. And the ones that who can't cut the mustard will go away. And that's why a lot of times 
the guys that superstars in college, you don't really hear about them in the NFL after two, three, four years because they're not hungry no more. You get these guys that's coming out of these small schools who've been working their tail off the whole time. They don't know nothing but hard work. So once they get to the NFL, they're going to keep working hard. I don't need you to tell me I got to work hard because I know I got an opportunity. You get guys in the military who came from a fucked up background or either you go to jail or you go to the army or you've been practically homeless half of your life or you ain't had nothing. They make the best out of the military and they grateful for everything that the military has done for them. But you get those individuals who my first time going to the military, I had a dude. I forgot his name. His last name was Owens. But his mom and his dad was both sergeant majors in the military. He washed out of basic training <laughs> because he had the mindset that he had already. He made it because who his people was. So he felt like the rules didn't really apply to him. And that's what happened to a lot of individuals. So, yeah, you you would think, you know, during the pre-work phase with the college football, they would wash him out. But nah, man, we we have an attrition rate in this country that's ridiculous because, you know, it's always another person to come in there. Yeah. Anybody and everybody is replaceable. Yeah, that's yeah. in the fucking world. Yeah. Except me. I can't be replaced. Nah. <laughs> You can do my, you can do the job that I'm doing, but you can't replace me. <laughs> yeah, in that in that mindset, hell absolutely. Yeah. In that, that mindset, mindset. Yeah. absolutely. You can you can put somebody else in the position, but they'll they won't be me, good, bad, or indifferent. You know what I'm saying? Now I don't mean I don't mean that in an in a arrogant way. I just mean that in a confident way. Because what I do, only I do, just like each one of y'all. Home Depot ain't gonna find another whiskey, Charlie. It'll take them. It'll take them fifteen years to find somebody to work to your quality, to your caliber. Right. That's just the way it go. You you when you're in the military and you you got an awesome saw gunner and that dude move up to sergeant, you like damn. Now I got to train a whole other dude. This gonna take some time. I just got him where I needed him to be. Hell you gonna yeah, run through man. A ton of them. We used to go through that shit. They'll switch up crews switch my drivers out and all that shit then i gotta train a new driver man it, i'll be like man keep me with the same squad i went over the first time we we we, we made history like let's yeah. keep it together why do you gotta send this one there send that one there keep it together man like the navy seals and shit they so successful because a lot of them teams you know they stick the fuck together through mm -hmm. each each motherfucking rotation they together so I don't know, man. I think sometimes don't don't break up nothing that's going good. If you ask me. And then at the same time, you know, there's a uh, before I say that, uh, Chris Adams going back to Arthur Blank. Arthur Blank, he said uh, he told them to blow the lead versus the Patriots. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that shit. money. Then he said uh, it's the ones that think they good. Wait, it's the ones that think that they good due to who got them there that get the hardest wake-up call. Absolutely. Facts. What's going on, Chris? We missing you, man. Christian Dykes, he said, hell yeah. And then Chris Adams also said, and it's crazy because you don't want to block anyone's blessing slash promotion, but at the same time, damn, speaking on losing a good soldier. And that's what I was going to talk about. As a leader, you should always be looking for your replacement. You should always be in a position where you're working yourself out of a job, because if you're working yourself out of a job, that means you're looking to move up to the next position. And if you are a hell of a leader, you know, the guy that you trained up is going to at least be at the caliber that you that you were at before you go. So a good leader, if you want to advance, you got to work yourself out of a job or else you will have a job that will just keep your ass in the same spot for the next 15, 20 years, and then there's no growth for you. So you should always want to work yourself out of a job so you can build somebody else up and then they can give it to somebody else and build them. So sometimes there's no disrespect when they take your amazing saw gunner because three to six months later, when you see that dude getting a team leader position or a senior spec four position and you see him kicking ass, you proud because you know everything that you poured into him and the help that you gave him in order to do the job that he's doing. 
So you should always want to work yourself into a better position so the guy up under you can <clears throat> show the skills that he learned by being under you. And I think that's really a true testament to a, a hell of a leader and what you've done. Somebody else being able to take what you, the foundation you laid and then add the next layer to it and they continue to build up. Because if you keep it all to yourself, then what the fuck good is that? Once you dead and gone, who's going to carry the torch? Uh, yeah. Shit, I'm about to have to get off here in a few, guys. My damn phone battery look like that motherfucker going down. <laughs> no, you you good because I'm watching the clock, and we right at an hour and fifteen minutes, and it's oh. nine oh one, and it's time to go end it so we could go deal with our families and have some fun. And I notice these numbers is starting to jump up with people watching. You got to tune in at 20 hundred CST. That's Texas time, Central Standard Time on this side of town. You got to tune in at 2100 in the Midwest where, I, where I'm originally from in Michigan. And in uh, California, Mount Pacific time, you probably be tuning in at 1800 if you're two hours behind Texas. Not Mount Pacific time, huh. whatever the hell the time. You know it is, Pacific Coast time. Yeah, well, it is. It don't give me the line. Yeah, you know too much on that shit. Absolutely. Uh, Chris said, Shannon Sharp said on one episode of Undisputed that he could venture out and do more, but you get comfortable doing what you're doing because you know you're good at it, at your position. That's absolutely correct. We all get comfortable at some times and don't want to leave where we at because it is comfortable. It's like automatic. I do this in my sleep. It's nothing to me. So I get that. And Christian said, I lost my dad and his two brothers, all Vietnam vets, in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I know. We we definitely discussed that, and we you know how we go. We definitely take our hat off to you, brother, and you know you always in our prayers and our support, and we here for you however we can help. And you have to you actually have to take that time to grieve for yourself for as long as that you need, because I know I still have grieving times that I go through with my pops being gone too. So. That's definitely a big thing. Well, it's coming up on that time, man, and I want to be um, thoughtful of everybody's time. My counterparts, Killer Wolf, Whiskey Charlie, myself, my wife, and my family to move on for the next part of my mission for the night. That being said, we're going to get ready to let y'all go. Whiskey Charlie, you got something to say before we go? Uh, no, sir. I don't have a whole lot to say, but uh, hey, appreciate you guys that are uh, tuning in. Make sure you like and sharing. Get the word out there that uh, we're out here to help support anybody, anybody out there that uh, that needs that help. Uh, we've again, we've all experienced something. We all have our different experiences. So uh, just uh, if you need the support, just reach out to one of us. Killer Wolf, you got something for the people before we shut it off? Yeah, I got a new page, guys. Um, Killer Wolf. Um, they didn't let me put two L's, but it's K I L A Wolf. Um, so, you know, you guys can follow me, man, or whatever you need. I'm here. Hit my inbox or, you know, shit, I even shoot you my number. You know, we all here for you guys, man. Stay up, man. And you know what it is, man. Big Sarge, I don't have nothing for y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure you switch over to that YouTube channel and uh, give us a, a like and a subscribe so we can continue to make that thing grow and share with some people you may know, whether they're young, whether they old. In the military, not in the military. They got military family members. Share it, man, so we can help get this thing grow. We got to do things to affect that number 22 and uh, cut that back. That's what we're attempting to do. That's what we're going to do. Chris said, well, hey, love Big Sarge. Here. Huh? Hey, Big Sarge. By the way, I like your new uh, TikTok video up on there, your uh, first official Walmart video. Oh, man. I'm having a blast. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm having a blast, bro. <laughs> Hey, I mean, uh, listen, I, I was having so much fun yesterday just living life. I probably shot like three reels, TikToks. Man, go check my Mr. Peen page out, M-R-P-I-E-N, on uh, TikTok, on Instagram. Facebook is at Ethan Smith, so you'll get that. But, yeah, hey, you know what? I got my first troll yesterday, too. I almost went crazy on him, man. I made a post, and some, some sucker came back talking about, man, this dude, this dude, uh, I forgot what he said, but at the end, he was like, go read a book. 
I'm like, ooh, we got the right one today, baby. I sent him a nice little message too. My wife was like, no, nah, babe, chill out, chill out. I'm like, no, nah, you don't come on this page talking crazy. You got the wrong one. So yeah, I appreciate that. <clears throat> uh, Chris said, I known about your dad. Much love to you. I appreciate that, brother. Much love to you and yours too. But speak grunt, grunt speak. When we come through, we speak to you. You speak to us too. We share some things that help you make it through. Buy grunts, fuck grunts. Not everybody is welcome. Well, everybody can't be a member, but everybody is welcome. So y'all have a blessed and wonderful night. We'll see y'all next week. Ooh, matter of fact, no show next week. Yeah. Next week is Mother's Day, May the 8th. We will not be on next Sunday because I'll be doing something with my family. I ain't even talked this over with my counterparts. But I'm letting y'all know right now. <laughs> Next Sunday, May the 8th is Mother's Day and it's my son's 17th birthday. So we will not be doing speak grunt. I'm letting y'all know right now. So uh -oh. if you're looking for it, you'll see us the week after that. <laughs> uh -oh. I feel you. I feel you. But that's it. That's all I got for y'all, man. Again, thank y'all for tuning in. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful night, man. Peace. Peace.